I'd like to know why it's one. Why are we so special? I will say this though, in our masquerade tabletop game, I don't think any of us is going to be special or chosen for higher purposes. <laughs> to begin with anyway, it's going to be like, it's something you have to earn. Oh god dang it. This is what I don't get. There's literally no, no warning, nothing that shows that the stream cut out, nothing. It just looks like it's just working normally. This is what's getting really confusing because it seems like it doesn't always do it. It's really confusing. I'm not too sure what's causing it. I'm hoping in the other house I'm going to be able to actually stream there as well. Because that house is going to have a much better internet connection than here. But I have to see. Yeah. All right. So yes, that's what I was saying, with all how this is sort of like, in, in our masquerade, uh, TRPG sessions and things, it's not going to start out like this, it's not going to be like we were picked of like a special purpose, it's going to be like something, something you have to earn. Same as Cyberpunk Red, it's going to be something that like, you don't start off with all this thing, it's something you have to, you have to work and earn. It's not just given to you, you have to earn it. Mm. And even if ever did Wrath and Glory, I mean the same thing. You have to earn the things you get, <laughs> not just given. Ah, right. you are surrounded by unclear motives which you yourself don't understand. <gasps> that unnerves me and it should unnerve you as well. Okay, number one, why are you here? Number two, and what are your motivations? And number three, you unnerve me. You say that a lot to me sometimes. <laughs> I was like, I've realised. Anyway. Ah, number two. Okay. Um. Yes. Seven. And what are your motivations? Finally, you managed to raise your voice. Could you notice the effect on my softly? Oh, yeah. Now I can't even see it. <laughs> So you haven't gone mute since last time I saw you. Good. Well, I'm here for a selfish reason. I need to develop a rapport with you to better fulfil my obligations. Last time we met, I couldn't see you as my equal. Now you've been accepted into the Camarilla. What choice do I have? Ooh. I don't understand if you didn't want to see my face again, but I'm one of the first in New York community, and as long as you're part of it, it's going to be impossible to avoid me. You could try. <laughs> Especially when I have business with you, and I do. As you might have guessed by now, one of my tasks is uncovering and understanding your bonds. And one of them might endanger our community. Well, that's not an incident at all. Who's he talking about? Huh. Right. Who number one? Sophie. Number oh, number three. This is about Kaiser. Cody has shaked his head. <gasps> that leper is bad news if you ask me, but who doesn't trade information with him these days? No, that's not the major player. It's not going to be Sophie, is it? This is our troublemaker. <gasps> we open the fire and see some prince photos. You freeze when you recognise the face, no one might have the best memories. <gasps> who the hell is that? <laughs> Newman. Benjamin Newman. Asshole who made the last years of your life a living hell. The sexual harassments, the mobbing, the way he kept delegating all, uh, all of his obligations to you without ever letting you reap the fruits of your labour, the way he stole your soul. Goddamn prick. Mm. <laughs> you look up to Craddy here, expecting answers. Apparently, your company is in trouble, lots of financial regularities, and Mr. Newman is all too happy to testify that the one employed is just suddenly this place is to blame. <gasps> Uh oh. <gasps> the story is as fishy as it gets, but you've got your disappearance as being investigated. A lot of people are searching for you. How have they not found us? We've literally been in the streets at night, we've been shot out, we've been sneaking around. If you saw someone and you heard it, them noises, you'd be looking outside your windows. 
This is video. It attracts attention to us, and in as such, it must be stopped. I'm gonna kill me. Must be stopped. Sounds threatening. You dread thinking what he planned. I arrange for you two to meet tomorrow as you can straighten the situation out and say goodbye to the life you, for you forsake him. <gasps> what? You'll arrange. What? Your argument with my sources right now. Usually these matters are left to my discussion, but I can't think of any solution. The lost sheep reappears, takes care of unfinished business, and disappears near the scene again. Nobody cares. It's simple. It's clean enough. The contrast schemes on the set victims. It gives me an opportunity to learn more about you as I observe. Well, it's neat. Uh, when neonates interact with Kane, they use the whole deer. Their true natures are laid bare for everyone to see. Of course, the investment in being kind to you was making clear his self serving intentions, like you do start figuring them out yourself. I can see that a little bit. I've got to give him that. I can, I, I can see a little bit of that. A little bit. Mm. Any objections? Any. Alternations are probably worse. You shake your head. Very well. I'll arrange a meeting and drive you there tomorrow. Better come up with a load of bull. I see as I swell up. He disappears for a hobby apartment, leaving you as confused as the last time he closed the door on you. God damn it, you need to think it through. <gasps> Newman. For a long time, you just sit in your haven, lost in your thoughts, thinking how revenge is dish best served cold. And how are we going to go for? D'Angelo. Here you are, Archmatrix, you get to do D'Angelo again. Hooray. Knowing there are only so many places with good enough view of Manhattan Bridge, you decide to check the ones that aren't likely to be crowded at this time of night. Ooh. It does take, doesn't take long, but it's just like it just about. Jane's carousal. As you're walking on the piano, there's a... Now there's a lonely figure sitting on the bench, still flask in hand, his leg upon the railing, soon enough you hear a familiar voice. Evening turned to night, and the final flickering rays of sunlight give way to kind nocturnal shadows. So did the last of the Japanese tourists give way to a blessed, to a blessed silence. <clears throat> and yet I couldn't shake the feeling. Pause mid-sentence, he leaned back to the bench, my question looked straight at you, upside down, his face looks even creepier than usual. That I wasn't alone. <clears throat> number one, what is it to a few and they're eighteen? Or number two, or number two, what's in the flask? Ah, the, that flask, is that what I think it is? Depends on what you think. A little something. From my parent reserve, I caught the drunken say this probably where it came from. Fair enough, though. He takes a sip and points to the flask in your general direction. Want some? Oh, we haven't fed for a while. I will say that. Who are you, number one? No thanks. On number two, drink a bit of the flask of the drunken sailor. Would you like some sailor? All right, let's drink from the drunken sewer. Sure, why not? You smell the con the content of the flask midi recoil. Even if it wasn't for the nasty whiff of cheap booze, the underlayers and the blood underneath isn't a isn't a pleasant at all either. You know what? I'll pass. You won't hear me complaining not about that anyway. There's been another one killing me down by the docks. <clears throat> number one, say my no. Or number two, you didn't think to bring me along. Which ones? There we go. I know, I know it's from my leg. I really need to get. Uh, uh, why, why didn't you tell me soon? I got to law and helped at the crime scene. No point. We know it's her. Victims to suck to dry, same as before, another sign on the wall. Something like impending doom and oh lord, he's coming. The, p the particulars escaped me. You know, that night I saw her, she looked so frail, so innocent. Deep, deep, deep inside, I was hoping she was with the spook to get out of town, maybe. Just maybe, that would be the end of it. But that's me, you know, hopeless, hopelessly op optimistic. <gasps> number one, you know why she's doing it. Number two, so what's the plan? And number three, any idea what, where she is? 
we got another 30, 32 minutes of streaming. We'll see whether I'll finish up this section and if another section appears, do that bit. We're gonna see. Oh, number two again. Alright, uh, we'll do number two again. I just re um, oh, is that, oh, I might be losing track of which numbers are which. Oh, it's number two. Okay, so what's the plan? The plan is, you stop Miss Denton taking a swig of the liquid courage. Stop her, at any cost. Hooray. I'd rather not involve killing the girl when I'm starting to think that ship's already sailed. <gasps> Give us a quick. You're not sure how much of it is genuine or how much it's an act, but still, he's, he's starting to worry you a bit. So anyway, after having me in neutral ground, public space, shouldn't get to a list though, and nothing you can tag along. <gasps> Number one, Larson. Or number two, who are we meeting? Okay, so it's four twos at the moment. I'm, I'm, just, I'm keeping track how many twos there are. <laughs> give me a one, please. You can give a two if you want. Thank you. It's time to keep it hard. Keep it key. Keep track of the same number over and over. Now, let's leave the Porsche Mac alone for now. It's pretty clear. He just accuses us we are. <gasps> he looks away and passes the bench next to us again. He might want to sit down for this. <gasps> now, I get the feeling I know which, which one you're going to pick. Because you want to hear me repeat a feat I did I did, I did in the last Masquerade stream I did. <laughs> but, I, but I will see if I am surprised. Which one? Number one, number two, number three. I thought so. I thought so. You just hear me swear again. There we go. Oh, for crying out loud, just fucking tell me who are we meeting? <gasps> Valerie. <gasps> Valerie. We're meeting her, the one who literally tried to hunt and kill her. Alright. Uh, number one, I'm sorry, I must have misheard you. Number two, that murderous bitch from last time. Oh, number three, better put down the flask. You are picking every single swear line tonight, aren't you? Valerie, as in murderous bitch Valerie, likes to choke people out for the fuck of it, Valerie. That Valerie? You ever notice that if you repeat the word uh, enough times, it just sounds, that, that sounds like animal noises? That cloud looks suspiciously like an eye. This one looks like an eye, doesn't it? See, there are these things. There's the pupil. I never noticed that. I just noticed it a few moments ago. But yeah, that Valerie. <clears throat> I know you two didn't exactly hit it off, but I'm just not as bad as you might think. I mean, in some respects, she's probably worse, but she can be reasoned with. Once again, he goes for the flask, but stops himself in mid notion. Look, the way I see it, we ain't got a choice. As much as I want to help Sana, she's clearly a few bad shots of a, of a bell for it. More people are going to die unless we do something about it. <sighs> Which one? Number one, I get it, that's the two evils. Number two, I still don't like it. And number three, you think Valerie can be trusted. So which one shall we go for? Number one, number two, number three. Ah, number one, all right. Alright, fine, I get the two evils. Lead the way then. I like your attitude, kid. I know it sucks, but hey, if it's one life has taught me, you don't always get what you want. Mm, true. Not to be proud of his words of wisdom, he tries to top up with a last twig. Single drop falls from his crooked teeth, he looks at the end, flash up, lost content. Well, then, that, uh, fucking poignant. Uh, poignant. I can't know. I can't see that. Muttering the curse under his breath, he makes a valiant effort to get off the bench, but he staggers, struggling to remain up the right off each other to lean on. He shoots with a smile that's as crooked as affectionate. Hey, kid. You meet his gay, trying to look friendly rather than come con descending. You're yeah, alright. Mm. With a heartfelt moment, you bid adieu to the sprawling vista and make your way towards the bridge. Next stop, Manhattan. Entering the park from mid from Midtown Manhattan, you promptly take a spot by one of the alleys not very deep in the park. When it's past five ten, 
Christine, you'll have to wonder if she's ever going to show up. I wonder. Suddenly, you hear a, you hear a familiar voice, but with a unfamiliar tone. She sounds almost nine. Mm. Hello, Jeannie. <gasps> Fatty! And there she is, walking alone on the side of a fountain. It looks less out of place than the back at that John Gainford novel, but only by, by a slight margin. Something tells you that there are only many, so many places you with your home, probably not one you'd want to find yourself in. <gasps> wow. She glances over at you, barely no noting your presence. Sorry about last time, nothing personal, you understand? When I get caught in the moment, I can get a bit intense. Yes, I can witness I've seen the intense of that. I can attest to that. Hmm. Number one, get a room you two. Number two, you're late. And number three, let's get down to business. So which one? Oh, I'm seeing so many Discord messages appearing. <laughs> Can you two ju just get a room B? Because the sexual tension is just unbearable. The angel gives you a pleading look. He clearly doesn't want you to dwell on the subject. You heard that, Jenny? Your friend has us all figured out. Just a step forward, you'd smell of her perfume is overpowering. Or maybe it's just jealousy. Although I'd be careful if I were you. Last time he got close in, uh, it worked out for you. Speaking of which, how's that neck doing? <gasps> we can flip her off or say it. it's fine. Which one would you like to do? <laughs> the flipping or the it's fine? Uh, you give her away a smile very clear, and very clear view of your middle finger. She returns a smile and blows you a kiss. So what's this about? <gasps> Ooh, number one, we have a proposition for you. Or number two, it's about Santa. Number one or number two? Oh, number two. We're here to talk about Santa. Who? Oh, right, the same blood. What about her? The girl's a threat. We need to find her. Figure we can do it. Fast we work together. Uh huh. Keep going, honey, because I have a feeling there's a catch coming. The catch is. Awkward silence. Not often you see him at lost of words, seeing him struggle, you tend to jump in. Oh, good God. <laughs> number one, we want her alive. Or number two. <laughs> I thought you'd pick number two. The speed of that. You have to not be a murderous bitch for like a day or two. Fair enough there. See, now that's a deal breaker right there, sugar. Don't make me even, I mean, you, 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 you even consider it, you have to sweeten the pot. Once again, stress at the Angela, and I bet Tall Dark and Tansom over here might have some ideas. Oh, good God. <laughs> number one, I don't like where this is going. Number two, you want a cookie? Or number two, or number three, just tell us what you want. I think I might have to try and shave tomorrow if I'm able to. That one. I, uh, I, I think she wants to get her hands in your cookie jar. <gasps> they both look at you, wide-eyed. You may pick which one you want to have. Weirdly enough, they both sound like your kind of line. <laughs> in fact, you said both them lines already today. Oh yeah. <laughs> Which one? Number one or number two? Ah. Uh, oh god, that didn't come out right. I mean literally not. Um, wait, what are we talking about? The angel draws his heart, eyes hard. She wants a higher profit target to show off to the prince what a good little skirt she is. Huh. That's all you care about nowadays, huh? Playing the game, climbing the ranks. A smile creeps onto her lips. You can tell it's forced. The android definitely knows how to get onto her skin. That's my genie, big old brain, heart to match. Once again, she turns to you. And you, uh, I have to wait to try and help this girl. He does love him at a damsel in distress. But you, I'm still not sure what your angle is. Hmm. Number one, it's the right thing to do. Number two, same as you, advancement. Or number three, why do you care? I'm going to guess number one. I'm going to guess number one. 
Well, it might not, maybe I'm going to guess it's going to be that. Which one? Number one, number two, number three. Aha. Uh -huh. See it. I don't have an angle, just seems like the right thing to do. Oh, wow. Seriously? Jeannie, you got yourself a live one. Good for you. So there you know my terms. Contact me when you've made up your mind. Don't take too long though. I'm a lucky girl. I might just find your thing over on my own. So I hope we can work together. But you make a good team. Back in the day, didn't we? Slowly and seductively, she puts her arms around his shoulders. It glances over to you, clearly enjoying how awkward it is to make you feel. Oh boy. <laughs> Number one, okay, that's just creepy. Number two, you have a thing for nozzies. Or number three, D, you have some explaining to do. Which one would you like? Number one, number two, number three. Aha. Uh -huh. Can we get back to you wanting to... Oh, I misread the answer. <laughs> I misread the number. Oh, well, yeah, yeah. I thought you said one, oh, I misread that one, that was my bad. <gasps> wow. The angel watches her go and look in his face and makes sure of a look of, of longing and guilt. It's borderline comical. Finally turned up towards you, breaking the spell he was under. Well, that could have gone a lot worse. Number one, what just happened? Number two, a higher profit target. And number three, what were you guys a thing? I kind of want to click number three, but I'm not too sure. I'll move it away this time round. I'll make sure I see that I see the answer. Four way. I'm gonna even go through the numbers, so at least I know which one's which. Number three. All right. Okay. I have to ask you. Did you and she ever? Nope. Not going there. Well, now we got some history of this. Some of it good. Some of it bad. Let's leave it as that. Okay. Don't be fooled. I was just. Likes to play around, but she will rip your fucking guts out and stuff from up your ass if it means she can get what she wants. Oh. And right now, she wants me to give her a last. Uh, number one, why would she want last? Or number two, how is he involved? So, which one, number one or number two? And now I know there's a three there. I now know which one I'm looking for. Uh, wait, what does Lars not do any of this? He doesn't, not that right away. It's just he might have some less than admirable chapters in his bio in his biography. Might have done some pretty uh egregious shit. And rather he knows a certain handsome someone might have against stuff set trick. Which would allow her to bring him down and bring him down a primogen, even one as lame as Larson's a pretty big deal. He squints, rubbing the bridge of his nose. There's a lot of swear in this one, isn't there? Uh, fuck it, I'm heading back to the office. Need to put my feet up, get some blood flow into the old noggin. You come in, you nod, why the hell not? And so you make your way towards Fifth, uh, Fifth Avenue. you got a long way ahead of you and a lot of stuff to figure out. Although it's not your first visit, you still find it hard to navigate the dark, rust ridden corners of the dream terminal. Luckily, this time you have someone who probably does this blindfold, so you just follow his lead. As you're both climbing the rickety stairs leading up to the mezzanine, you suddenly notice light coming from the angel's office. It quickly assures you that no, he did not in fact leave it on. <gasps> oh. You burst through the door la la like like tango on hooch. Or was it turn on cash? Turn on hooch. Ready to unleash unholy fury on the intruder effect a heart uh, effect an anarchy death squad or an SI hunting party. Instead you get Larson who's nearly fought up the chum and you bust in. <gasps> number one, what are you doing here? Or number two, Mr. already. I'm probably just going to do this bit, I think, and I'm probably going to call it there. But I don't know, we're going to see how long it takes. So number one or number two? Yes. I know what they are. <laughs> yeah, I remember. Larson, what the hell are you doing here? 
Well, how does it look like I'm doing? I'm waiting for you two birds to show up. Even the birds intrigued and irritated by the surprise visit, the Angelo walks over to the cabinet and pulls out a fresh cigar. <gasps> and now, now the clowns revive, does the highest... Does his, does his highness mind telling us what brings him to our merry circus tent? <sighs> he points at the tiny shadow cowering in the corner of the room. Your stash might turn to be a very familiar face. <gasps> Sarah! The blood. No, not again. Please. <gasps> number one, where did you find her? Or number two, did, did, did she tell you anything? Number one or number two? You get to pick. Ah, uh, number one. I have also figured out now to turn the volume higher than I think. On the actual stream labs. That might be another issue I'm having, but now I can... I take a little bit more and it actually help. Okay. Why the hell did you find her? Outside my son Dutch must have heard me, found out where I live. It's not uncommon knowledge among the dusk... But... Hmm. She probably figured I could help, but honestly I have no idea what to do with her. I mean, I... Should turn her into the prince, but, but that's another strike against my people. And again, I can't just set her loose now to what she did. Why is there so much swearing at this part? Ugh. Fuck. The Angela, you can tell that I'm, I'm just put if my first instinct was to come to you. No, Larson, I would ask you that uh, that is what left of your common sense. <gasps> he leans over to you. Hey, kid, I think we should call it a night. Just give me some time to talk to the girl. I did. I said it a few times in the like three times in the stream. It hasn't even been forty minutes left yet, and it's been that many times. Maybe I'll get through to her somehow. <gasps> the sign, the sign. It's always there. Though I ain't holding my breath. I don't think you have to leave me to it. Spending the night in a small room with a tiny serial killer somehow doesn't seem to appeal. The young D'Angelo will be alright, he got some tough choices ahead of him. Oh, <gasps> We have to wait. You really want me to... I will do it once more time. Okay? Is that okay? Is it loud at the moment? Good. <laughs> Alright. So, I mean, hi. It's a good, don't you? <laughs> uh, yeah, so, D'Angelo's favourite word of the night. I mean, hi. <laughs> so, D'Angelo's favourite word of the night, and it seems to be Archmage's favourite word of the night, it seems, once again, is the word fuck. So yeah, that seems to be her, her new favourite word in these streams. I'm going to click the rest button. I get the feeling this is the night we have to get... Oh. Oh no. <gasps> it's the night. We have to go speak to Mr. Newman. <laughs> what are we going to do to Mr. Newman? <laughs> In these streams, it is. Oh, I already know it, it, it's had occurred here. But this is the night where we have to go see Mr. Newman. Knock, knock. You'd ask who's there, but you don't know if it's Sheriff of, of New City will play, will play along. When you open the door, you see him toying with the car keys hot in his hand. Ready to go, fleshling? I'm not surprised. You don't, you don't feel like it. But you give him a nod nevertheless. Excellent. Stay close. He leads you down to the vehicle which parked nearby. Once again, he takes the wheel, literally and figuratively. <clears throat> Those eyes are creepy. Uh, everything inside is just the way you remember it. D no. <laughs> no. <laughs> down to the rear view mirror of heaven in terms of, the, of your gaze. And no! <laughs> Gangalo. Oh. Well, no idea who that is, but I <laughs> However, the trip itself feels for nobody different. Last time Claudia drove you around, he was thoughtfully dragging you away from your old life. <gasps> this time he's pulling you back into it. Hmm. Hmm. 
It's a shiny sword, you know, we could take it and sell it. <laughs> I guess. Might be, 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 be worth a few dollars. Oh, goddamn new one, you're getting violent just thinking about it. Let me tell you how it's going to go. As I said, I'm avenging me between you and your kin. I'm not sure how, how quite to feel about that one. It's going to take place somewhere you should know very well. I'll watch over you two from a safe distance and make sure you adhere to the rules. You should know those very well, but I'll, I'll reiterate so you can't, you can't say I didn't warn you. Don't do anything that would violate the master way. Don't establish some secret rules of contact. I will know. Oh, they don't know that. Do treat it as the last time you were to meet. Take this chance to wrap everything up. Here's your story. You're fine, you find yourself at crossroads, but I had to radically change your life and move out of the city. The subway is unbearable, the rent is too high. They've heard it all. However, you do not appreciate being accused of crime you didn't commit, so you're back. Both to clear your name and strike fear into the heart of the real culprit. By now you should know how to cause fear and I'm not my living, right? Oh yeah, we know how to do that. He smirks at you. Have fun as long as you don't leave a mess for me to clean up, we should be good. That car makes a sudden turn. I'll leave the final details to you, just be so kind and don't make me regret it. You can sense he's going out of his way for you, he doesn't try to force you in, in into gratitude by stating it plainly. If you know, you know, he'll he'll, he'll see if you are worth of it, worthy of this. We are here. <clears throat> you take a look around, recognise the destination. He was right. It's really a place. It's the office in which you wasted the best of your life. You should be up there. Apparently someone is blackmailing him with documents proving his pen shot for embezzlement. Oh. The poor guy is stuck in his office and he's probably pretty shaken up. The documents don't exist, but it would be a shame if someone went there, wiped the floor of the man, found proof of his pilfered the phones and forced him to have made his crimes. He turns off the engine relax and relaxes comfortably in his seat. You suddenly leave the car and head straight to Newman's office. <gasps> the elevator ride just doesn't seem to end. After what feels like five hours, but in reality close to 30 seconds, you finally reach your floor. Oh god. Look at this office. It's been so long. <laughs> How long has it been since we've seen this office? Your ex-boss is sitting in his office, just like Cody has said. He looks, how can you put it, as if he had just googled body language for alpha males, he attempted to be poorly copied the most cartoonish posture in order to imitate the blackmailer. Out of habit, he took a deep breath on the second side of his office. <gasps> Amanda? He immediately relaxes. It's just Amanda, his eyes say, as the slide and appears beneath him. Forget that's for a vacation, people were worried, you know, not to mention, overworked, I tell him back, then overworked some more, something had to take over for you, you know what I'm and guess what? We've just started digging into your work, some unexpected financial reinforcements just started popping up. We need to work on a common start to explain the uh, those. You see, <gasps> you keep crying, just staring down. The poor idiot still thinks he's a predator in the room. I see how long it takes for him to realize his mistake. Newman senses that you're different. Somehow, he attempts to stare back but fails to withstand your glare. He starts to wonder what's going on quickly as a conclusion. Wait a minute. So you're the one who sent me that message. Now that's a lie. He starts approaching you. <sighs> Sweetheart, if I'm going down, you're going down with me. You think you can convince anyone that you never knew what was going on around you? Fat chance. Even if you did, you know my friends and never let you live it down. He's he's right in front of you licking his lips, probably the best way to display his complete physical superiority. You won't give him the chance. <sighs> Now we can use number one, using that punching bag, number two, fire outside the building, or number three, which I think you might do, use our presence, discipline, to scare him. I'd probably say number three, because mental warfare is a lot more effective than physical, because you can heal from a physical wound quicker than a mental one. There we go. Before anyone blinks, you Stand in front of him with your arms crossed. After he blinks, your hand is already on his throat. He freezes up. 
He watches you gain his face and slowly branches your long, long fangs. <gasps> long, long fangs. <laughs> uh, a loud, throaty, inhuman growl rings out through the office, making the morph into a violent hiss. For a moment, your ex boss can't identify the source of the other sound. Or rather, his brain refuses to accept that your relatively small body is capable of generating a noise like this. As he begins to understand and process the unnatural sight of your fangs, he is gradually overpowered by the animistic fear that shatters his entire world view. You were supposed to be the victim. Why are you a threat? Why did reality break? You slowly tightened your grip around his neck, not hard enough to trigger a fight response, but enough to strike deeper fear into his heart. Hey, this is just tire. <laughs> Neil. You can comply with your demands, screaming softly and a single tear making his way down the stubble on his cheek. You are very really liking the, uh, the, the, uh, the stream, aren't you, so far? Ah, uh, Yes, anyway. <laughs> okay. Newman. Fuck. For fuck. Obey. You see, you see, it's just like I am. Obey. I'll d do whatever you want. Just, just don't kill me, please. You gather your strength and throw him, slamming him against the desk. Good God, she's getting quite fat, isn't she? What the hell? <laughs> oh my God. Why is there so much swearing in this bed? I think you find it's true. <laughs> ah. This guy really likes to swear. He's making DeAndre lo 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 look like a verbal saint. Ah. So Newman. What does the Newman go? He goes, fuck. Fuck, 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 fuck. <laughs> a bomb boardroom predator has met his better in a place he least expected it. You slowly start walking towards him. Cock, I'm at the new one, he is. In a verbal way. Mm. Ow. Oh my god, no! Not more! Ah, <laughs> uh, stop, stop. I get it, I'll do it, I'll fucking do it. Why? Why is he doing so much swearing? <laughs> With shaking hands, he scrambles towards the safe on his shelf. He opens it and takes out some documents inside. It's, uh, the, the, this is what you want, right? This is what you want. He ripped the papers from his hands and browsed them. This should be enough, as Quadir would put it, prove his, his pen sharp for embezzlement. Oh my god. Oh! Why is that so much? I'll clear your fucking name. Tell, tell, tell them somebody else. You twist your heel into his hand. He screams. I did it. I'll tell them I did it. So, do number one, you better do that. Number two, next time I'll bite into your throat. And number three, leave in silence. Which one shall we do? Ow. Oh, number one. All right. Ow. If you don't, I'll visit again. You walk into the... Oh. Pressing the ground floor button with a new one as the door sl starts closing. He mumbles something under his breath and winced in pain. Dr. Grady is kind. Once you shut the floor, he instantly puts his foot on the gas pedal. Walking walking off the pit of no regret, said everything you had to say. I wiped the floor with him and got the documents that should keep him in check. That asshole will be looking over his shoulder constantly for the rest of his life. <gasps> Cardia smiles deviously. Looks like you can take care of business, as expected. I didn't. I don't need to tell you to hang on to those documents, but keep in mind. Keep in mind. Oh. Keep in mind that you can use them for, for more. The, um, let's get to the antique.
Wait, what? We've always looking for more contracts from the big fish once we set away in. We you can use what you know of Newman to convince the elders that he's better off as your ghoul. Ooh. Now now, uh, now, now that's an enticing thought. You're surprised it's just on the Caspies and crosses. Okay, instead the light goes red. You give Cruddy a... Ow. A good hard look. Number one, why are you not mean to me? Number two, thank you. Number three, good job with setting it all up. I'm going to guess number two for some weird reason. I thought so, number two. Thanks. It doesn't feel like, how do you call it, a very vampire thing to say, but you say it nevertheless. He's visibly taken aback, his usual frown brow smooths out for a moment. Then he takes on serious, slightly sorrowful expression. Don't suck up to me, kid. Mr. Bad Guy is still here. And without a doubt, he will go back to decapitating suckers like you any time now. The car starts slowing down. We're here. Oh. Look outside the look out the window to see your haven. Take care, I'll see you around. Prepare to have to see you too often. <gasps> you leave the car and start walking to your haven. Ow. Thinking about Caddy, can't say you're fond of him, but what with the welcome he gave you and all, but after tonight, you can't say you aren't either. You're going to need some time to turn to understand him, that's for sure. The hunger calls you. The city skyscrapers, the seemingly never-ending sprawl of the boroughs, it's not a prison, you need to get out, you need to take back over, you have to drive for an instant. The memory of your sire's frosty blue eyes mock you. Tempt you to show your dominance, to prove that you have the guts. Take what you want. <gasps> Feeding! That's just a thing. Coaxing, no. Ordering a mortal to bend to your will, drinking deep from their lifeblood. Faces face pass you by, or some uh, rather shame than over as would do now. Impose yourself, your rational mind, fearing the blatant breach masquerade, and preferably holds it over the beast and its compulsions. Calming yourself with more victory in and of itself. This is semblance of command that I'll have to do for now, but it won't last. You need to quench your hunger before it overtakes you and make you lose control. <gasps> and that's where we're going to end the stream. Because it is one past midnight, we have reached the goal we were aiming to do. And the stream split into two. For no random, for no reason whatsoever. Yes. All right then. So... We can do some more D'Angelo next time. We want to get D'Angelo finished. Because I get the feeling the next one we do is going to be the one that's going to finish it all up. And then we get to decide who else we're going to be. Mm, wait. Yeah. To focus on companions. Alright then. So for me, Dan Manager, thank you very much for watching this stream. It was very unexpected. Uh, thing. What night then? Well, on night 10. It's done night 10. Okay, so for me, Dark Mario, thank you guys for watching. Catch me in the next stream, which is going to be hopefully Friday, and that might be some more Cyberpunk 2077. As Kuva is going to help Judy. No, that's the wrong one, that's the wrong save. <laughs> Kuva is. What was he going to do? <laughs> I just don't even know what he was actually going to do. He was going to do something. I can't remember what he was going to do. I guess he could do some more gigs. Finish off the gigs around the city. Because we are, but I think we've done two whole sets of gigs at the moment. We could do more of the east side of Night City. Get them finished up. But I don't know yet. Or, we'll have to figure it out. Alright then, folks. So, from me, Dark Magic, thank you very much for watching. Catch me in the next stream, which is going to be on Friday, with luck. Mm -hmm. And if people would like this weekend, or Monday, or maybe both, I could do some more Rogue Trader. To see how our, see how, how, how then the, the powerful Psyker Cosmo will be like. Alright then, catch you in the next stream, you on Friday.
where we're going back to Night City.